everybody, it's me Margaret, and I am outside in the front of my house because I was letting Bentley walk around. I've got some things I've got to do today, but I had this thought, and it's kind of strange in that major events in your life really cause you to think about things differently, even the small things. For example, I'm moving and I have a daughter who's getting married. His birthday is today, by the way. Happy birthday, Maggie. Both of these things have caused me to reassess what I consider important kitchen appliances. Now, recently in the community tab of YouTube, I asked you guys, I said, what are your favorite kitchen appliances? And we got a multitude of answers. Oh, hi, Cozy. Got a multitude of answers. What's, and I think it's hard to say just one thing had to let her in. So I thought it might be fun to take you inside and to show you some of the things that I consider important in my kitchen. It's why I could live without certain things because as you know, we continue to declutter. I let her in and she thought I was coming in with her. So she's waiting patiently. Now, right as we come into the door, you can see my giveaway pile. So we are still continuing to declutter. Now, I'm not surprised that the majority of people responded that the coffee maker was their favorite small kitchen appliance. And just out of curiosity, I asked Tucker what his was. What's one thing we just can't live without that you would not live without? Coffee maker. <laughs> <laughs> So apparently that's important. But everybody had different types of coffee bakers. Some people just said coffee maker. I personally really like a one cup coffee maker, but the reviews on the, let's see if I can say it right, Dolce Gusto, I think it is, or Gusto, it is getting really good reviews these days. Once upon a time, Keurig was the name in single cup coffee brewers. And now this other one is really coming up in the world, especially if you like espresso, which I do. Which brings me to the next thing. I personally can live without the coffee maker if I have to because this is one of my favorites. And it's just a French press. This one happens to be that Bowdoin, B-O-D-U-M, Bowdoin brand, which is, you know, very popular. It's uh, roughly in the $25 range or something like that. But this one came from Goodwill for $5. It was in perfect condition. So with the combination of this in my kettle, I would be set. Now the reason I like this the most is because I can make my coffee as strong as I like. None of the K-Cups, even though they say strong, they really aren't as strong as I like. So to be honest, this is my favorite, but I don't always use it because it's not as easy as this. This requires a little bit longer waiting and clean up. You have to clean up afterwards. Which brings me to another problem. I own too many of them. Now the problem is that they're difficult to clean and it takes a little longer, of course, to make it than does the one cup coffee maker. So I have so many just because of convenience. Now, of course, this one will make probably two and a half mugs of coffee. And I'm saying mugs as to clarify that it's not the eight ounce measurement cup. It is actually, you know, taller. So that's what I can get out of this size right here. But these will be great for one cup in, of coffee. And I usually use these in the afternoon when, you know, I just need a little pick me up, just wanna sit down for a coffee break. I really need to be brave and get rid of these guys over here. They're much harder to clean because you have to take a spoon in order to get the coffee grinds out. What I end up doing is putting it in the sink and waiting until I have more to clean. <laughs> That's usually the next day or so. Now the good thing about this is that I throw the coffee grounds directly in my azaleas. My azaleas love that acidic addition. And I don't have a compost pile in a compost bin in this house. So I just throw it right in the bushes and they are happy as larks. Now there's talk in the science community that tells us that unfiltered coffee raises your cholesterol, um, also has more caffeine in it. So if you have a Keurig, you may have one of these things and you can buy these little filters. Now, unfortunately, I can't find them in the unbleached version. So you only have these, the bleached kind, which is really not that great, but you can put that in there first and you'll have the filtered coffee. 
it's capistrol or something which raises your cholesterol and it apparently it just adheres to paper and that really reduces the amount that gets in your body and raises the bad LDL. But I've already packed my good <laughs> my regular coffee filters that I use for this. They are um, brown and they're unbleached and they're much better. I have this little strainer and I can just put that in there and pour the coffee through. They tell you not to use paper towels although it will take away the bad stuff. Paper towels are made with formaldehyde and all kinds of horrible chemicals so you don't want to do that. Okay ovens. These are not small kitchen appliances which is what I was talking about. These are considered large kitchen appliances because they are built in but I'm bringing this up because because many of you said you loved your air fryers and I tossed this idea around I did some research or whatever and I realized that air fryers are not for me the reason why is because I'm always looking for ways to put good fats in my diet yeah there are a few times when I think I would like to have one but I am remember building the house that we're moving to and I'm finally getting back my GE Advantium speed cook oven. That's what I had in the last house. We knew that this house was just an interim stop for us. We've kind of been living in it like a camp house almost. I haven't decorated it the way that I really wanted to because I just never felt like my house, if you know what I mean. But anyhow, these are just plain ovens, but they do have the convection feature, which I do love. I always cook on convection. I, there's very rare occurrences when I put it on bake. But an Advantium speed cook oven can give you very similar results to an air fryer. I'll talk more about it when we actually get in the new house because it's an awesome product and if you're looking to replace your microwave say I would definitely say look into this because it does microwave you just hit microwave and then it does only that or you can use it for a convection oven which boom you hit the button or you put it on the speed cook and that uses three different types of heat which cooks your food faster and gives you more of a crispier effect on things like say french fries or whatever so it's kind of like um, a fancier version of an air fryer because it does a little bit more so I've decided I don't need an air fryer I just need I always need a convection oven but I'm really looking forward to this Advantium speed cook to have that again I guess I should say so we'll talk more about that in the future and I don't want to forget my toaster oven it, we keep it up here in the cabinet because I'm not one of these people who likes to have appliances scattered all across the counter. I want my counter to be pretty bare. And we have this little extension cord so that it easily reaches down and there's a plug right beside this unit right there. So we plug it in, the doors stay open, we use it. You leave it open while you're eating your toast. <laughs> and then by the time you finish, you, it's cool, you close it up and hide it away. I don't know how old this is. Um, the first one we had was a Black & Decker and I had it in college. So we got married, we used it till it wore out and we got another one because we loved it so much. Now one of you mentioned that you have an air fryer toaster oven. Um, I think it does something else. It's an all-in-one unit. Now it's probably twice the size of this and so it wouldn't fit in a cabinet like this. It's so large that you probably do want to leave it out on the counter. but that's kind of cool for having a multi-purpose appliance. Tucker uses this every day because he eats some sort of bread every day. He toasts it for his sandwich or whatever. I don't use it that often for that purpose but I will use it as a tiny little oven. If I want to cook a small amount of something like if he's out of town and I just want to cook up a chicken breast or something I can bake it right here with um, you know the controls so that's kind of neat. Of course we probably won't be using it for those purposes when we get the Advantium oven back so but we'll still have that as a toaster. And this brings me to probably one of my favorites of all and that is my Instant Pot. Now first let me tell you, it, Instant Pot if you don't know is a pressure cooker. It's supposed to also slow cook as well so it could replace your crock pot. If you're not comfortable with pressure cooking this is the safest way to go and I've been pressure cooking for a really long time. I was comfortable with it, you know the kind you put on the stove and, and I use that all the time but when this came out I'm always going to default to the safer version if that's possible and this is 
this is better on so many different levels as far as I'm concerned. Now, when you get it, it's going to come with a liner, which is, you know, like a pot like this. And it comes with this little trivet thing, and it has its purpose, and that's good. However, there are lots of other accoutrements that you could get for your instant pot. And I don't know if I would go all out, especially at first, but I would encourage you to right off the bat buy a second liner. And the reason why is because many nights I am using this to create two different dishes that don't have the same settings. Now oftentimes I can cook a whole meal just in this pot, which is great. Or you could have something like these up here. Now you have to have liquid in order to make the Instant Pot work properly, a, a certain amount of liquid. And so thick liquidy things like um, chili, for example, are not good options in the Instant Pot by themselves. It's not enough liquid and it will burn. Unless, of course, you have a very liquidy recipe, I suppose. <laughs> My recipe is not. And so it says the word burn on here and it, you immediately stop and you fix it and whatever. However, you can cook things like that inside a separate pot. So like this right here fits down in it. And so you can cook anything when you do it pot in pot very fast. That's what it's called, pot in pot. You can look up recipes that stand for that. Now this, this is two different kinds of pot in pot cooking. So this is one kind of pot in pot cooking that you could get. And I like this one because it's larger like this. And then it has a little lip inside. So this little shallow one can fit right inside and balances on that little lip. So you technically could have a dish down here and a dish in there and put the top on it and you could cook two things at the same time right in your Instant Pot. Now I made the mistake of buying this one first. It's the same concept but the problem is the sizes. You have this right here, which is you know a little bit, and this right here, which is a little bit. Do you see the difference that this one right here can hold much more by itself? So I use this one sometimes just by itself without the little insert in there to do some pot in pot cooking. So my suggestion is if you had to make a choice and you want to cook more than one thing, don't buy this kind, but buy this kind. And I'll link that below. Actually, I'll probably link all this stuff below. Um, I am Amazon affiliate, so I do get a tiny little commission on this stuff, and I'm supposed to say that to be legal, but you guys know I'm not in this for the money, so you buy there your stuff from wherever you get the best price. Instant Pots are essentially just pressure cookers, fancy versions. See the pressure cook right there? That's pretty much the only setting I use on this. <laughs> Well, I take it back. It's one of two that I use on a regular basis. All these other ones like, you know, soup and broth or um, rice and all, these are just pre-programmed settings. However, when you're following a recipe, the recipe is going to tell you whether to pressure cook it on high. So you've got those options here, high or low or whatever, and how long and blah, 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 blah. And you probably won't be using all these fancy settings. One exception to that is saute. So I just leave mine set on 20 minutes because you never know. You can brown things right here in the Instant Pot before you ever get started. And that makes, the, makes it wonderful. You won't have to dirty up a frying pan. And of course, not all recipes require that you saute, but it's really handy to have that feature. Now you'll notice that there is a slow cook setting. This is supposed to be able to be used to, uh, in place of your crock pot. Now I've tried it one time and I'm not quite sure I like it as a crock pot. It worked, but I think the actual slow cooker is better because of the materials. Okay, and this is made out of um, an aluminum steel type mix. I don't know what it's made out of, but it's metal. And can you see down in there? The heating element is right down in the center bottom like that. With the crock pot or 
slow cooker. It is literally a ceramic pot that holds heat differently than this. I feel like that's a better option. So I have not chosen to get rid of my crock pot and use this instead. I just I just haven't. Not to mention that I really like the shape of my particular crock pot. Here's the Instant Pot. Um, volume wise, maybe they're similar. I'm not sure. I don't think so. I think this one is larger and I like the shape of it. I'm just not ready to give up my crock pot. So uh, we pack two things. Now there's something else that I do suggest that you buy when you get your Instant Pot and that is a set of replacement rings. Now inside your lid, to make a good seal, you'll have these silicone rings that are removable easily to wash, but they retain smells. So if you smell this, and I wash mine in the dishwasher, the whole thing actually can go in the dishwasher except for this outside unit. That's a plus. But the dishwasher does help remove some of the smell, but it doesn't completely go away. So if I smell it right now, it's kind of, mine has kind of like a chicken type smell to it because that's the last thing I cooked in it. Now, the reason I have a separate one is because I also like to make little cheesecakes. I make sugar-free keto cheesecakes in my Instant Pot and they're awesome. Now, that requires a springform pan that will fit in your Instant Pot. And by the way, you don't have to buy specially made Instant Pot things as long as, as you're if you can put it in the oven, you can put it in the Instant Pot. So as long as it fits down in the Instant Pot, you can use it. So that goes for glass bowls um, or, or Pyrex baking dishes, you know, things like that that you would, like I said, if you could put it in the oven. So I have this little springform pan and we make these little cheesecakes. But I don't want to use my silicone smelly ring in my cheesecake because I it is possible to transfer some of that um, smell or whatever it can kind of as the steam is heating it can somehow or another transfer a light taste into your sweets so I don't want to do that and there and that's I've never experienced that personally that's just what I read that people have had that issue so I keep this blue one for my desserts well the only dessert I've ever cooked in it is a cheesecake but this is my cheesecake ring. And you can get them in packages like this uh, for relatively inexpensive. I don't even know what. I I'll link this below too. But that's good to have. And your, your rings will also kind of wear out over time. They kind of get stretched out. They hold up pretty well, but it's just good to have these on hand. Now, something else that I cannot part with in my decluttering process is my Ninja Duo Blender. <laughs> this thing is my best friend. I use it almost every day. I love smoothies. I find that I really can't get enough vegetables and green vegetables in my diet, so I sort of drink them instead. And this breaks that spinach or kale down to nothing. It obliterates them. Now what I normally use is this thing. And by the way, it came with all of this. Um, you have a, a big size smoothie container thing and you have this smaller one. And this is the one that I use every morning. But look, this is your little blender attachment specifically for this. You put all your stuff in here. You put your top on it and you fit it down in here. Click it into place and off you go. And of course that little attachment works on this thing too. And if you're walking out the door, you've got tops that you can put on them to keep from spilling it in your car. And then of course it works like a regular blender as well. And it is awesome. And let me tell you, if you don't want to get this one, if you're looking at, bl at a new blender, you really would like to find one that is a square shape. And the reason why is physics. You get a better mix when you have a square shape because it's spinning around in a circular motion you got that you know vortex that sucks the stuff down in there but it also the square part parts kind of bounce everything back into the middle instead of let the centrifugal force stick it along the outsides does that make sense do you remember your science from elementary school <laughs> because that's what's happening in here so 
like I said, this I can vouch for. This is one awesome set, and I absolutely adore it and wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Now, very similar to the Instant Pot, you have some pre-programmable functions on here. And every morning I turn mine on and I hit this Ultra Blend. And then I walk around and put everything away that I have gotten out while this does its job. What it does is kind of pulse so you're not standing there having to push your button like that and then once it gets you know five or six different pulses go through there then it just and makes everything wonderful again and of course you have all your basic functions as well so um, pretty awesome now I have two things down here in this cabinet that I'm not dragging out one is my KitchenAid stand mixer which is an awesome appliance but if I had to, I could live without this. A hand mixer would be fine. Why? Because I'm not a baker. This is great. It's awesome. Space at the new house will not be an issue, so it's certainly coming with us. It's not something I want to part with. And then behind there, I'm not even sure if you can see way back in there, that is the George Foreman grill. That It's a fancy schmancy one that has all these interchangeable plates. You can cook, it's like a panini press and of course a regular grill. I even have these things to make uh, sliders or whatever. But I never use it much in this house because you can see how awkward it is to get to. That won't be the case in the new house and I'll go back to using it more often. Now here are two 30 year old relics that I cannot live without. These are what I use in place of a full size food processor. I do own a full-size food processor. I have packed it already because I don't use it often, but I was not ready to part with it. Now, this, this is a handy chopper. It's made by Black & Decker, but I know other brands make it. And when you need to chop up onions or something like that, this is awesome. The best part, too, is it's small, goes in the dishwasher, and we all live happily ever after. It just is so small and compact and easy to get to and easy to use, and I just, I just love it. So I will always default to something like this rather than getting out the big food processor. And then the next thing I love more than anything is something that I took out of my neighbor's giveaway pile about 30 years ago. <laughs> I didn't ever have one of these. It was called the salad shooter. I buy big blocks of cheese and this is an awesome cheese grater. You can grate everything right into the bowl that you're going to use or even right on top of a dish that you're cooking and it's fantastic and all these parts go into the dishwasher and this once upon a time was pristine white but you know over time plastic white plastic will yellow and that's exactly what's happening here but it's still after all these years it still works like a charm and I love it you also have this blade right here which is a slicer so with the combination of this and the handy chopper I'd much rather deal with these small things than pull out the big food processor whenever. <laughs> Last but not least is my immersion blender. We eat a lot of soups around here at the Oleander house and there's plenty of times I'll put something in the crock pot or in my instant pot and then while it's all hot and soft in there the instructions will tell you to blend it up. Well, if you have an immersion blender, you can just stick it in there, hit the button, rah, 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 and it's all done. You just wash this little thing, put it away. However, that Ninja Blender that I was showing you a minute ago, it will take hot liquids, and not all blenders will. But the transfer process is kind of dangerous. You've got really hot liquid and you're trying to put it into a blender or whatever, you could spill, or spill it and burn yourself. This, however, is a really simple solution and safe. Now it's important to note that I'm going to replace mine because it's made of plastic, 30 year old plastic, and we know now that heat and plastic should never be combined. And if you look at the options today, most all of them are made of stainless steel. 
and they all come with different kinds of attachments these days too. I'm looking for a simpler version with good reviews, so I've got my eye on this Mueller. I may never use the whisk or the milk frother attachments, but the price is low and there are over 7,000 good reviews. So I hope that you found something helpful in this little kitchen appliance tour that I gave you today. I know I found it really helpful to read some of your favorites. And as a matter of fact, in the comment section below, if you didn't get a chance to answer that earlier, answer it now. Tell me what some of your favorite kitchen appliances are. I know Maggie's going to like to read it too to see if she's missing something great, you know. And also put brand names in there too because that's kind of important. Not always, but if it makes a difference to you, be sure to include it. And remember that in the description box below, I've put a link to these items that I've talked about because I've got firsthand experience with it. If you want to look into purchasing something like that, I'll put those links in there too. So I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. I just realized that I had the wrong camera setting on autofocus. So I hope I'm in focus for the first part of this video. Oh, I've had this on the wrong setting. If I want to have an, uh, why can't you speak? Now, one of the things I like to make in my, it, no, 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 no,